Hey guys, welcome to the Creative Arena. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a wonderful animated text effect on scroll trigger using Elementor native widget without the use of any line of CSS code or additional plugin. So at the end of this tutorial, we're going to create something that looks like this, as you can see. Now we're going to achieve this effect without the use of any line of CSS code or additional plugin, just Elementor native widget we're going to tweak to be able to achieve this wonderful effect. And you can also make this responsive on all your devices by simply reducing the font size of the various texts that are being used on this tutorial here, okay? So you can see this is a very wonderful pick effect. So without further delay, let's dive in and get started. Okay, so this is our demo web page, and you can see I've taken the time out to create the various uh, text that we'll be using. As you can see, this is just the structure that we'll be working with. No effect, no animation to, done to it yet. So I'm just going to come over here and walk you through how I was able to achieve this briefly. Okay, so we can come over here. First off, we'll come over to the parent container here. Now for the layout for the parent container, we can see here that we have a minimum height value set to 120 BH and then item direction is set to column vertical and, uh, and align items is set to the center. Now we'll come over to the style option. We can see here that the background type is set to classic and the background color black. Advanced settings, we have uh, padding to the top 100 and to the bottom 100 and padding to the right and left is set to 20. Okay, now for the first one here, the first text here, we'll come over to the contour. We can see the text here, your brand. And then for the HTML tag, we set it to P tag. The reason we're using P tag is for SEO reasons, okay, for SEO purposes. So we'll come over to the style. And then we can see here that we're, we're going to align it to the center. And then we'll come over here to the uh, typography. You can see here the, the font family. Uh, it's set to area, you can use whatever font you want to use. And then for the font size, we set it to REM and give it the value of 6 REM. And the tra text transform, we set it to uppercase. Now we're going to go to the advanced settings and then come over here for the custom width, we're going to set it to a custom and give it the value of 100% full width. Okay. And come down here to where we have the background and give it a background color of black. Now this is important because uh, it depends on your stacking and the amount of text you're working with. So it's good to just do that settings. And then we'll come over here. You can see that the text here is set to white. Now we're done with the settings for this text. Now for the second one here, we just added a container. Now in the settings for the container here, you can see that we have the item direction set to row horizontal. And then we now see, we, we now set justify content to the center. And then we're going to align item to the center as well. Okay, for this one here. Now, then we'll come over here to the gap. We can see here that the gap here uh, for the column, we set it to 40. And then for the row, we set it to zero pixel. Now we'll go to the style option. For the co background color, we set it to black. And the advanced settings, we're going to we give you the padding to the top, 30 pixel, and to the bottom, 30 pixel, as you can see. Now for the individual text, we just use the same text settings here. However, the font size for the text here, we set it to... 5 REM instead of 6 REM, like the first one here. The same if text if uh, settings was done on this other text here. Now for this one here, this the settings for the container is quite simple. The only difference is the padding from the first container. The only difference here is the padding to the top, we gave it 50 pixel, and then to the bottom, we gave it 20 pixel. Now for the text, same setting as the text, use here font size and everything. However, this particular text, we then we added a font width, so we come over to the typography and you can see here we added a font width of 800 extra bold, okay? Same settings that is being done here is the same settings that was done here, both for the text and the container. Likewise, this one. And for this one here, it is the same settings for the container. However, for the text, there is no uh, font width added to any of the text on this one here. Likewise, this one, but the same settings. And even this particular last text and the container here, the same settings. Uh, being done here okay 
So now that is how we are able to achieve this particular text structure here. The next thing we're going to do here is to add our animation. That is to animate this particular text, which is what we're going to do next. So to animate this text, to give us that wonderful scroll animation, we're just going to come over to the first text here. This one here, we'll come over here to the advanced settings and then we'll come down here for the Z-index. We're going to give it a Z-index value of 1. Now we'll come down here to where we'll have the motion effect. And for the sticky, we're going to set it to sticky to the top. And for the sticky offset, we're going to give it the value of 100. And come over here to stay in column and toggle this to yes. Now we are done with this first test here. So the next one we're going to do here is this particular one. But the first thing we're going to do here is to come over to the container housing these two texts here. Under the advanced settings, we'll come down here. For the Z-index, we're going to give it the value of 20 which is going to be above this particular first text and below and also above the remaining, the, the subsequent text that will be coming after it. Okay, so now we we'll set it to 20. Then we'll come over here to the motion effect. And for the sticky, we're going to set it to the top. And then we're going to set the sticky offset value to 100. And for the staying column, we're going to toggle it to yes. Now for this first text here, we're going to go to the advanced settings, come over here to where we'll have the motion effect. Now we're going to toggle on the scrolling effect okay and then for the horizontal scroll we're going to come over here set the direction to the right and then for the speed we're going to set the speed to 8.2 then for the viewport bottom we're going to set it to 22 percent and then for the viewport top we're going to set it to 50 percent now we're going to come over to the transparency now for the direction we leave it at fade in the level we leave it at 10 now for the viewport to the bottom, we're going to set it to 27%. And then for the viewport to the top, we're going to set it to 55%. Okay. Then we'll come over to the block. Now for the direction, we'll leave it a fade in. And then for the level, we're going to increase it to 15. And then for the viewport, we're going to set the viewport to 25% to the bottom. And then to the top, we're going to set it to 55% to the top. Okay, so now we're done with the settings for this particular one here. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to, we're supposed to apply the same settings to this. So we're just going to copy this out to make it easy for us and then paste tab. Now we're going to come over here, go to the advanced settings and come down to the motion. And then we're going to come over to the horizontal and change the direction from to the right to the left. Okay, so we can see now that our effect has taken place. Okay, so now we're going to do the same settings here. Okay, so we just come over here and then we're going to go to the advanced settings. Under the advanced settings, we'll come down to here, we'll have the motion effect. For the scrolling effect, we're going to turn it on. And then we're going to add the horizontal uh, scroll here. But however, we can just do that simply by copying this here and then pasting it here. Pasting the style here. Okay, so we can go over here, come over to the advanced settings and we can see here that we have the same style that we have here. We now have it here. So now when you toggle this off and turn it on, you can see now that the star is now taking effect here. So now for this particular one, we cannot copy the star here because you can see that this text here is um, set to font width 800. So it's going to uh, break the design we have here. So what we're going to do here, we're going to come over here, go to the advanced settings, and then we're going to go to the motion effect, toggle the scrolling effects on, and then come over to the horizontal scroll and do the same settings we've been using here for the horizontal, set it to 8.2. Now for the bottom viewport, we set it to 22%. And then we're going to set uh, the top to 50%. Then we're going to come over to the transparency, direction, leave it at fading, level, leave it at 10. Now for the bottom viewport, we're going to set it to 27%. For the top viewport, we're going to set it to 55%. Percent. Now for the blow, we're going to come over here. For the level, we're going to set it to 15. Bottom viewport, we're going to set it to 27%. And then for the top viewport, we're going to set it to 55%. As you can see. So now that we've done that, the next thing we're going to do here is uh, we're just going to come over here, copy this style here, copy it, paste the style here, come over to this one, copy it, and paste the style here. Okay, now for the container here, we're going to go to the advanced settings and come over here. Make sure you give the container a Z-index value. Now let's check this one here if we added the Z-index value to this container. We didn't, so we're going to add one. So we're going to give it the Z-index value of 2. 
and then come over to this container here. It's very important that you give it a Z index value. Now for this container here, we're going to give it a Z index value of three. And then we've already copied the styles, so we can check it out here to be sure that the styles are properly copied. And you can see, yep, same thing for this one here. Come over to the advanced settings and come down here to the motion effects, turn it off and turn it on. And you can see that this style has a sticking effect here. So now we're going to come over here. You can see that we are having an issue here when you scroll. And the reason for that is when we come over to this container here, let's come down here to the motion effect. We can see that we haven't set a sticky effect here. So we're going to start the sticky effect here to the top and then give it a value 100. And then with the staying column, we're going to toggle it to yes. So now we will come over here. We can see now that we'll have our effects now showing. Now for this text here, we're just going to add the effect to this text. First off, we'll come over to the container, come down here to the motion effect, and then we're going to set it to stick it a bit, and then give it a value of 100, and then stay in column, I'm just going to toggle this to yes, okay? So now, come over to the layout and give it a z-index value of 4, okay? So now, I'm just going to come over here, copy this out here, copy this style here, and then paste it here. And then copy the style here and paste it here because they are basically the same but different text. So we just paste the style here to speed up our work. So I'm just going to do the same for all the remaining text. So I'm just going to pause this video and do it real quick. All right. So I've been able to add the effect to the various containers and images. And now we're left for the last container. So I'm just going to come over here and show you something real quick. So I'll come over to the advanced settings and then under this, we're going to make sure here for the Z-index, we're going to give it the Z-index value above every other uh, container or text on the on our website. Now, okay, so we'll come over here to the motion effect, and then we'll come over here for the sticky, we'll set it to the top, just like we've done before for the container, and then we'll come over here, give you the sticky offset value of 100, and then stay in column, we'll set it to yes. Okay, so now for the individual text here, we can see here that we haven't really added anything here. So to just do here, just come over here and then let's copy the style here and let's paste it here and then copy the style here and then paste it here. This is pretty much what I did for the previous one. But in order to avoid making this video pretty long since there are much text here, I just decided to do it real quick. Okay, so we can come over here and see now that we have our scrolling effect added to this. And also we've added it to this one here. Okay. All right, so we are done with this. So now when we'll come over here, the next thing we're going to do here is before we preview our changes, now we're going to come over here to where we'll have our parent container here, this container here. Okay, so you can see now that we now have something like an overflow here. You can see we have an overflow here. Now this is not good. Okay, so we're going to fix it by coming over here to this particular container here passing all our text, come over to the style option, come down to here, we'll have the additional option, and then for the overflow, we're going to set it to hidden. Okay, we can see the overflow is gone now, and we now have our effect here. So now the next thing we can do here is to click on the publish. So we can click on preview changes to see what we've done. So now this is our page, so we just scroll over, and then we can see the effect. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so now what we're going to do here is we're just going to come over here and then let's preview it on a live page. Okay, this is our website here on a live preview. This is what visitors can see. So now you, you come over here, you scroll and you can see here that the brown, you can see that this hood, the potential is coming up slowly and becomes clearer clear and it got the viewpoint and it's clear and the next text is already gearing out to come up so once it gets the viewport it's going to become clearer and then this one why it's becoming clearer this one here is now stacking over the your brand text as you can see so you just have that and then this one is now clear so now what it does is holds the potential to now when you scroll it goes under the next one comes up make more sales and then it goes down and then this one comes become clearer and like that, like that, like that, and then the final text comes and becomes clearer and then takes them all, pause, and then it goes over. Okay, so you can see we've been able to achieve this without the use of any line of CSS code.
So that's pretty much it about this video. And so we've come to the end of this tutorial. If you've learned something new from this tutorial, please remember to give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to our channel, remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified first when I drop a new video. And feel free to drop your comments wherever you're confused or have any questions. And I'll do well to attend to as much as I can. But until then, see you on our next video. For now, bye-bye.